We're here with Tariq Dajani, who is the CEO and founder of ClearTag, a web consultancy and design company in Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming to join us on the stage for the first interview. Thank you for having me. So what, first question, what are your impressions so far of, uh, of the celebration of entrepreneurship? Well, it looks like an amazing event, actually. The, you can see the energy, and uh, it's amazing how many people are there. It's, uh, it's very impressive. It's an incredible community that actually in the Middle East that this is kind of a landmark event and we're kind of releasing this into the world, if you like. I mean, did you know that there were so many entrepreneurs of your age that were starting interesting businesses around the region? Well, you would hope that there is a big, a big crowd, but it's always, it's, it's always different when you see it live, when you see so many people coming in. Uh, actually, I didn't know there were so many people that would be would mobilize and come in here. So tell us about your company. Tell us about ClearTag. When, when did it start and what was the idea behind it? Well, ClearTag started in 1999 unofficially and then incorporated in 2000. The idea was very much experimental. So when we started, there wasn't a clear cut in, in terms of, okay, we're doing web design or we're doing interactive. It was, we wanted to just start a, to, to get into the whole mood of uh, .com, of, of everything that's happening online. Um, both me and my partner are architects, so we were interested in, in this multidisciplinary aspect of web. And it started by, as just an experiment, uh, working on uh, animations and so on. And one thing led to another, we found ourselves into a full digital, uh, into the web industry. So you, didn't, you actually started with quite a niche idea and then that expanded into other web areas? Um, yeah, niche maybe. We, we, so we wanted to work on computer animation. It's not exactly web. We started working on web to, to showcase our portfolio. And uh, so then web took precedence and we became uh, known for our web work. Okay, can you remember your first customer? What was the first kind of project that you worked I on? I remember that was very well the first customer. It's, um, it was called Toy Market and it was, for us, it was a celebration. We signed a contract for $350. That was like the big <laughs> thing. And uh, it's still a very emotional account. Of, uh, so and you're still working with that client? Yeah, we still work with that. That's an important point as well, isn't it? For any company starting out, it isn't just getting that first customer. It's proving to them that you can deliver and keeping that first customer. It's proving that you can deliver, that's one. But most importantly, it's... Uh, sustaining the relationship in a, in a landscape that is changing. So the client doesn't really know what to expect, what, what they want from web. So uh, the idea of maintaining this relationship means you're constantly adding in new ideas, constantly building on it, and uh, growing with the client. As the client get, matures more in terms of what they need from web, you work with them, mature with them. I mean, you are sort of coming in pretty much in the early days of web being a means of advertising a business and letting people know about business. This is, we're talking 99, 2000, and the Middle East was quite early on. To what extent were you having to convince people that this was something they needed to do? How much was that a part of your early business? You had pretty much to beg, uh, drop prices, do whatever it takes, because for them it was a very low on their checklist item. So it wasn't even on the checklist. It was something they would do if it's cheap, if, it's, uh, if you're beg enough, you would get the work. But uh, at that time, it was not something that they would come to you uh, requesting. It's something you would have to push. Yeah. So with that first client that you've been with now for 10 years, is your relationship all about them coming to you, almost treating you as their web consultancy, whereby they ask for new features or you promote new features to them? How much of that is a part of your business in keeping pace with technology and then convincing your, your partners that this is something they can do to increase value of their company? That's all the business. The, all the business is about keeping, uh, being constantly updated, actually being uh, avant-garde in, in, in everything that's happening, uh, pushing uh, ideas, uh, pushing new concepts. So the core of the business is being one step ahead and informing the client because uh, this is what they expect implicitly. Now, the idea of us being their consultant, we're informally the consultant. Still to date, very few clients uh, really deal with web agencies and so on as a, on a consultancy basis. Most of them still think about it as a job. But we try to transform this job into an interactive experience with the client. One of the problems I know that many Lebanese companies face is, is the internet infrastructure in the country isn't perhaps what it might be. It's certainly not what it is in countries like near neighbors Jordan and in the Middle East. I mean, how, is that, how have you been able to overcome sort of slow internet speeds and monopolistic practices in that, in that field? Yeah, I think we all know that uh, the internet in Lebanon is, is outrageous. It's, <laughs> it's something that's extremely frustrating, but 
it's part of the landscape, it's part of the ecosystem. We try not to think about it. Uh, is it an obstacle? Yes. Is it a major cost? Uh, what we incur as in terms of costs for connectivity and for the bandwidth is, is really, you can't even measure it in co and compare it with, uh, with the region, let alone internationally. So it's a big obstacle, but we tr I don't think it ever was a, a, shock, uh, a, a blocker. Sure. So we, we work around it. We try not to think about it because it's something that's not within our hand to change. And it's a level playing field because everyone's dealing, dealing with the same thing in, in the country. How have you managed to maintain a competitive advantage in the 10 years? It's obviously quite a crowded marketplace. There's lots of web design companies, web development companies. How have you sort of managed to stay ahead of the game and uh, sort of di differentiate yourselves from other brands in the market? I think what differentiates us is that if, if you look at how we term ourselves, we say we're a digital agency. So we're trying to focus on the experimental aspect of the business. So we're not purely saying we're a web design company because web, in a way, is becoming just really meshed with everything else that's happening from mobile and so on. So our core edge, our core approach is a very experimental, almost lab-driven approach to the industry. So this allows us to constantly have new value propositions to our clients, uh, bring in new ideas that are not necessarily purely about in incorporating web technologies, but linking everything together. I've seen on your website as well, you kind of, you blog a lot, you, you kind of, you instruct a lot of people on like, you know, ideas on marketing and how important things like search engine optimization is. How much is social media a, a part of the, the way that you can get your message out there and your role as, as, as an educator and an informer as well as a developer? I think this is one aspect that uh, became extremely important in the past two years. Uh, we started it as a small unit within the company, trying, because we were not sure how, how far this could go or what's the level of acceptance of, of uh, social media, but it grew very fast and it became a core channel. So at this point, we look at uh, our core communication as being a social communication, uh, online communication, a direct interaction. Uh, it's becoming uh, primal and it's becoming a very important aspect of the services we offer. Also. Okay, and a final question. What are you speaking about at the conference this week? Um, the title of my talk is uh, Things You Can Do When You Believe in Magic and magic meaning, meaning uh, believing in what's, what could be, believing in research and development, believing in being part of a global community rather than just focusing on your own economy and trying to deliver standard services, trying to go to be disruptive, to, to have a different approach to the entire uh, digital arena. Tarek Dijani, CEO and founder of ClearTag, thank you very much for joining thank us. You.